What's up guys? John, Jake, and Nathan here with another Praying Man production. We were in the area, we're in Redmond, Oregon, and we were dropping off a large clothing order to uh, one of our dealers here, Top Ten Archery, and we thought, hey, while we're here, he got, he got some bows. We need to do some bow reviews. Jake's been dying to put on an arm guard, so we're going to review some 2020 bows. This is going to be a little bit different than what we've done in the past since we have so many bows. We're not going to go into the nitty gritty step by step. We'll post some specs for you guys. If you want to go over some of the technologies, you can find the manufacturer's website and get you know really into the weeds. But we're going to shoot all these bows, apple to apples, draw length, poundage, and then we'll shoot three different grain arrows. We'll shoot them through the chrono, see how they do, and we'll let you guys know. Uh, this is a working day for them, so you may hear some people in the background. They're very busy selling bows, so uh, with that, John, you want to take us through the bows? Yes, sir. Okay, so what we have right now to shoot is a Bowtech Revoltex, two Hoyt bows, a Axios Ultra, and the Carbon RX4 Ultra. We have a Prime Black 3, Matthews VXR, two PSCs, uh, and the same bow, uh, different camo options as you see here, the Evo NXT and camo and their knock-on custom bow. All these bows are set at 30 inches in draw length and they're all set at 70 pounds as we showed you. So we're going to shoot a 350 grain arrow, 400 grain arrow, and a 500 grain arrow to get some realistic you know, hunting weights there. And then that'll kind of get you a good idea in what direction you want to go. And uh, at some point you're going to have to get down and shoot them all those just so you know how they feel and draw. But they're all really, really nice bows. So let's go through them and let you know what we think. So we're right at IBO. Both set at 70 pounds and 30 inches to draw. We are on the performance setting. All right, here we go. Cameraman. Axios Ultra, it's the aluminum. test for speed is the Carbon RX4 Ultra. Should be noted, and we'll put this in some of the specs, that the Axis Ultra is a number two cam. Compared to? Compared to the numero three on the RX4 Ultra.
333. And the Black 3 had a 337 IBO. Two options. This is the longer one. This bow has a 343 uh, foot per second rating. Same arrow, 70 pounds, 30 inch. John Dudley special here. All right, so this is a PSC knock-on version of the Evo 33. Okay. Inches, 70 pounds, and a 350 grain. Sorry, 350 grain arrow. Yes, 350. Nate, what is it? It's 350. 350. Hmm. Now we'll shoot some different. Grain weights, just to give you guys some ideas on what your hunting arrows are going to be close to shooting. All right, so now we have a 400 grain arrow, and uh, we want to kind of show you what these bows are going to do with more of a typical hunting arrow setup. So, got a 400 grain arrow. Let's see what that speed turns up. Yeah, the Voltex. So next bow up with 400 grain arrow is the Hoyt Axius Ultra, so the aluminum version. Three reps are almost up. Last one's going to be the RX4.
Next one is Matthew VXR. Now, heavy arrows. I'll switch it up. How about you shoot those? Uh, that's a 500 grainer. All right, we'll do it in order. All right, so 500 grains, black three. Matthew's Vixer, 31 and a half. Next, next team. Five hundred grain revolt X. Hey, Mariel, Actius Ultra with the number two cam. RX four. All right, we shot all the boats. You guys saw the speed ratings. Uh, I don't remember another year where there's been uh, this much similarity between all the top brands across the board. Axle and axle, the brace heights, even the speed ratings are all within eight to 10 feet of each other. Uh, so that being said, as far as the, what the boats felt like, um, draw cycle. Everybody wants to know how to go through when you draw back. So, John, what do you think? None of them are like, wow, this is really bad, with the exception of a couple. Uh, <laughs> but I really like, in all honesty, the, the PSC really stood out to me. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought that would be really, really nice. Yeah, it did. I agree. Any other ones? Close seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say uh, the Hoyt. Probably the one with the uh, that number three cam. Yeah, that one can yeah. probably draw a cycle. Yeah. You know, wall and all that stuff a little different. But I'd say that's the Hoyt. 
I yeah. agree. What about grips? What, what grip were you feeling on these? So that's the thing. Like most people have an idea of what they kind of want. Just like if they see a bow come out in November, October, and before they walk into the pro shop, they have an idea. Of it. The first thing they do is they grab that bow and they say, ooh, that grip feels good. Or I like this type of grip. I like that type of grip. Um, there's actually some pretty good variations in grips here. I'd say my favorite grip out of all six bows here was probably the Bowtech. It's a thin grip. There are some options. You can kind of make it a little bit higher wrist if you wanted to. Um, but just stock right out of the box. Um, I did like that. And probably the Prime, which is very similar to both kind of right off the riser styles, which I like. I don't like a big fat grip. This is very subjective to the shooter though. But that was my, my big one. You? Yeah, I like a narrow grip as well. Uh, I think a lot of stuff can go wrong. You know, the, the bigger, wider you get. <laughs> I've heard. Uh, my least favorite though, this is the most important thing, yeah, was the PSC. We were, we were both really big fans of last year's Evo. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I really like this book. But I believe that they did change the grip. And I'm sure, did check, I don't know this for sure, but I would imagine there are grip options that PSC offers. But uh, the grip on this Evo was uh, substantial. <laughs> it's a substantial <laughs> grip. Yes. Uh, this grip's got a great personality. That's what I'll say about it. Yes. Uh, okay, so we got uh, mm, mm, mm. hand Are we talking about hand shot? Uh, vibration. No, vibration. that's a good one. Okay. I would say that's kind of the next thing um, on people's checklist of how does the boat feel? How to feel out of the shot? Right. Right. Uh, boy, there is a clear winner here. Yes, very clear winner. Um, they they all were sort of decent. I if I if I had the, the, the Lowest on the group, I would say the Prime had a lot of hand shot. Yeah, it had some hum. Um, well, like I said, I mean, I, I, we've talked about how many times do you remember how the bow felt after you shot it, you know, in a hunting. Game. So I'm not so certain that's a deal breaker. Uh, which which one, in your opinion, was clear winner? Well, uh, the clear winner, and this is not up to debate. I, I do not think uh, for debate. The VXR by Matthews, which. I will say the Matthews has done a very good job over the many, many years that they've been doing this, of usually coming out with the, one of the quietest and definitely the most shock-free bows. Yeah. Way back to when they started with harmonic dampening. This bow is far and away the one with the least hand shock, the least amount of vibration. It's a little bit hard in, with these tall ceilings and all the aluminum to really judge sound, but I would imagine it's probably the quietest. It is fantastic. It's a stealthy black dog. It is a stealthy. If they say, if they say it's the stealthiest, which I didn't realize that was a tangible thing. Yeah. Like I've rated this as a stealthiness it comes in many forms, but yeah. No, it was great. Yeah. yeah. Very, yep. I agree with you for sure. And then uh, finally, we have you know a couple, two, two more things. Um, as far as we'll kind of package this into the, the back end of the bow, right? Back into the draw cycle. Valley, uh, back wall and let mm -hmm. So, what'd you think? Is there one that, that stood out? Uh, not in all three of those categories. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like a solid wall, so uh, my winner there would be the Bowtech. And second favorite would probably be, potentially be, it's gonna be between the Hoy with the number two cam or one of the two. Um, what about you? Yeah, I would agree. My, my, my favorite would be the Bowtech, and that's, again, as far as things the company has done really, really well over the years. Bowtechs have great back wall way back to, gosh, way, way back. They started with uh, limb stops, and then have even now, most of these companies have gone to cable stops because of the cam systems that they're using, but yeah. the way that they have those cams set up at the back end is really nice. Good let off, um, and again, by far the most adjustability was from the Bowtech, too, so that helps. Uh, being able to fine tune the way you do it. So, you know. Yeah, there was some, there's a little bit of sponge um, with the bigger, the bigger can that I didn't like as much on the RX4. On the way, yeah. 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 And probably the Matthews, too. There was, it just wasn't quite as solid at the back. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Hopefully, this helps. Uh, we're really, it was a great thing to be able to come in here and shoot all the bows at the same time instead of kind of piecing them together week after week. So, uh, 
as usual though, we're gonna tell you before you make any decisions, go into your local pro shops, support them, uh, shoot them all. You're gonna find out that there's certain characteristics that you like. Um, I'm not sure there's ever been more even playing field than 2020. It's all these boats shot really well. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I just want to thank Top Ten Archery for letting us come in and play with their bows and tinker. Also, uh, Corey Miller with uh, PSC Archery. He was the one that hooked us up with the PSC bows. So, big thanks uh, to you guys. If you hadn't had a chance, like and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in and look for more of these videos coming out. All right. Thanks, guys.